same thing as this. Not very useful. <laughs> uh, first big difference between uh, CSD and the tool like Strace, which you guys might be familiar with, is uh, uh, the concept, <coughs> the output is similar, the concept is very different. S-trace works by applying it to a process. Either you S-trace something by putting a command line after launching it, or you attach, attach it to a running process through the minus P plane. CD captures everything. It always captures everything. So you see every single system call from every process. And the idea is you reduce the, the information that you see by filtering instead of by applying it to a specific process. So in CD, if I want to see the filters of a specific process, I do something like prompt.name equal HTTP. As you can see, much less output right now. Uh, and uh, uh, what you're seeing here is essentially uh, the output of a, an Apache that is not doing anything. Uh, so uh, this lets, gives me the chance to introduce a bit about uh, to uh, reading what the hell this stuff on the screen is. Uh, the first thing is the event number, so a progressive number that uh, allows you to identify your event. Then you have a timestamp, you can modify these timestamps and choose uh, different formats uh, that you want for the command line. Uh, CPU number, process, so we can see that you know, HTTP is running on, on uh, a couple of different CPUs. Uh, process name, of course we're filtering for HTTP, so that, that's the only thing I, I expect to see. Uh, PID of the process, actually thread ID, uh, of, of the process, which uh, in case uh, of uh, HTTP is, is the same of the PID, and then system call number and system call output. So uh, the, the other thing to, to uh, keep in mind is uh, differently from something like Express, we show you the enter event <coughs> and the exit event for each of the system calls. So every time there's a call to the system, you will see one call with the uh, bigger sign and one call with the, with the, with the smaller sign. And essentially that lets you <laughs> measure uh, what's happening and see where process gets stuck. So in this, in this case, uh, Apache is not doing anything, so just sitting here on the screen, uh, essentially doing, you know, selects and waits, uh, which uh, uh, it does, as you, can, as you can notice, once a second. So it wakes up once a second to see if there's something happening on the machine. But as soon as we do like a curl to the machine at the point we immediately start seeing more interesting stuff coming out on the screen. So now I can see, you know, uh, false uh, operations on sockets, and you can see the, the address of the socket and all this kind of stuff. Now, uh, we see that I can look at this stuff uh, in, in real time by using filters, but usually what I do 99% of my time is I just, you know, save uh, the activity so I can do something like uh, 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 file one dot scat. And uh, now I'm, I'm you know, doing the same thing, but uh, uh, I have no output because I'm, I'm writing everything to a, to a file format that, that is very similar to yes, the Wireshark file format. Uh, and then, of course, I can read it with minus R and then see my data on the screen. Uh, the reason why this is useful is that, again, now I, I, I have an image. So what I've done here is uh, I've taken two captures, one of uh, uh, doing a request similar to what I just showed, showed you, which is uh, a, a little text file, which is on my system, uh, and I, I download it with kernel on, on the system itself, and I served this, I installed on the same machine, HTTP, uh, Apache, and then GNX, and I instructed them to serve the same file, I did a curl for both of them, I captured the data with CSD, and then I created a little text file. Uh, for sake of simplicity, I'm, uh, switch into uh, my text editor, and uh, hopefully this is readable from, from the bottom of, uh, uh, of, of the room. But uh, here, essentially, uh, by the way, I instructed the CSD to give me the data for each of event, so how much time each of, each of these events takes. And usually, uh, uh, everything that, that, that happens on the network usually starts with a connection that is received, and this is the accept system call. Accept system call, essentially, a process waits, calls it and waits until a connection is received on the specific port that is, uh, that is uh, uh, invoked to accept, and we can see, you know, uh, it, uh, it returns, essentially, 
the ball tells uh, uh, Apache that uh, there's data on the socket, so that set returns uh, quite, quite immediately, because Apache calls it only when it knows that it's the, it's the data. And here we see, essentially, the two ports for this specific connection. And then uh, uh, we can see how uh, Apache actually reads from the socket, and here you can see this is uh, your HTTP request, which is a get for text file.txt, and then uh, Apache goes on and uh, tries to open uh, uh, a bunch of uh, like uh, log files, uh, and most of these fails, and we can see it by, by the return value of the call, and we can you know we decode the, the call return value. So it tries to open dot .htaccess, tries to open text file.txt .txt .htaccess. Don't don't ask me why, and then. Uh, what happens is uh, the file is actually open, so this is where the text file is actually open. A uh, bunch of uh, uh, fun uh, functions here which are going to modify essentially the status of, uh, of the letter T. And then uh, the data uh, is actually read from the file and sent to the socket through the write the uh, system call. So uh, Apache uses a write the system call, which is something that lets you stitch together multiple buffers essentially in a single buffer, but here we, we can see the request is at 200 k, okay, and we can see we can see the data sent back to the uh, to the to the client. Notice one thing: uh, for some reason, uh, Apache. Uh, this is where the cleanup happens. Uh, so close of the file, uh, uh, close of the sockets, and everything else. And this is where the request ends with the, with the close of the actual socket. And before closing the socket, Apache does a shutdown, which is a system call that essentially does the close the head close of the TCP connection. So closes the TCP connection on its side, and then few microseconds later uh, closes the, the uh, TCP connection for good. Uh, grand total is uh, uh, from event 12 to event 69 for 57 interactions with the kernel to, to send, uh, to finish sending the request essentially from the beginning to the end. Uh, NGNX, as you can see, start, it starts again exactly with the same accept. We can see the tuple again. Uh, we can see uh, the uh, open of the file here. Uh, NGNX is much cleaner. It just goes into, into, into opening the file. Uh, and uh, other than doing a set, set, set soft option in the, in the middle, it just goes and does. What's interesting is it does a write B to send essentially the HTTP header. And then it uses send file which we still don't decode on this version, the new version is decoded it and you would be able to see that uh, it's essentially same file, it's a very interesting system call that takes two file descriptors, so uh, two uh, essentially files on the system, actually in this case a file in the socket, and copies one into the other without any, any intervention, without you having to read one and copy, and, and copy to the other one. And essentially it's used by standard web browsers to short shortcut essentially sending something like a file that is on your system without having to go into calls to the kernel and then coming back and then going back, back to the kernel again. And we can see this call is very fast. It's uh, like, uh, what, 6.5 six, six uh, um, uh, uh, microseconds. And then, uh, you know, we're done at event 78. So uh, NGNX is uh, 44 to 78 for a total of 34 events to, to send the same file. So we can already see it tends to be much cleaner and much more efficient. Doesn't try to open files for any reason and uh, uh, doesn't try to close connections that are, uh, have closed connections that are going to be closed uh, uh, soon after that. Uh, one other thing to look at this is uh, I can actually, uh, I have the files, um, Apache download wait, escape. This is my file. What I'm going to do is I apply a chisel that is called stop as calls time. So this is what I, what I was saying. You know, looking at the output that I showed you until now is interesting, showed you a lot of things, but it's uh, a bit challenging. Uh, we have a system on top of this which we call chisels, essentially. For example, here I'm applying a chisel that is called top, top as calls time, and it's called is essentially this one. So a very short Lua script, 
that creates a table based on uh, uh, syscall type uh, and, uh, and event latency and then sorts it and essentially shows me the time of the different system operations that uh, uh, Apache has done to serve this request. I can do the same for NGNX. And now I can compare, I can see that the bright B that Apache is using uh, to uh, send the information is, is uh, what's taking the most time, is 61 microseconds, while uh, uh, you remember, uh, uh, NGNX is doing a bright B that is very fast because, because it's on the header, and then a 6.5 milliseconds, uh, microseconds and five, so much less time there. Uh, look at the shutdown, 34 microseconds. It's a part of, of, the, of the time required here. For something that, as we were seeing, is pretty useless. Uh, and then, you know, a, a bunch of uh, uh, semaphore and, and white operations that are required because Apache essentially is multi-process. So when you use Apache, you have many processes and you have one that is essentially notified by the arrival of the, of the connection and it needs to dispatch it to one of the, one of the servers. So, well, the NGNX is based on, a, on, a, on an event loop underneath, so it doesn't need to do any, any of the stuff. So it tends to be, you know, you, you don't see any, almost no, you see almost no synchronization based on that. So, who's faster? Another common line that I can use is uh, uh, something like this. I can read the same file and I can do uh, this, which makes, uh, which essentially says give me the delta time between uh, events, instead of showing me the, the full time for each of the events, just showing the delta in the middle, and then I do uh, fd dot type equal ip before, and uh, event dot type equal exit, or <coughs> event dot type equal close. Let's see if this runs. Okay, this is an example of using SysDig with a, with a bit more complex filter. So essentially what I'm saying to SysDig here is, I want to see only IP connections. And for these connections, I will only want to see events that are either accept or close. So what does that mean? I'm essentially filtering for the first event and the last event of a connection. And then I'm telling SysDig, show the time in terms of data from the previous event. So here I'm seeing essentially uh, my, the time that it took NGNX to serve this request. Uh, around 0.5 milliseconds, something like that. And now I can do the same <coughs> with Apache. And this time it's uh, essentially one millisecond. So to serve the same little simple file, which is probably cached, cached somewhere, uh, Apache took uh, one millisecond while NGNX took uh, essentially half of the, of, of the time, a bit more than a <coughs> time. So we can declare the winner, <laughs> as, you, as you guys would expect, is NGNX. Uh, <coughs> caveat, of course, you know, this is a simple test, there are much more complicated use cases and so on, but this shows you how, you know, SysDig is actually interested to explore and dig, as the name says, this, this kind of information and, and learn interesting stuff about, uh, about pretty, you know, advanced system and, and application uh, uh, behavior. All right, Gianluca, you want to come? Yep.